Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's event, Movement Matters, a live healthy cooking demonstration and preview of Walk With Ease, a program that gets you moving regardless of your fitness or mobility level. My name is Trey Hurd, and I'm with Comagine Health, where we work to create a better healthcare system for people and communities to flourish. We are so glad you are able to join us. Tonight's event is made possible by the partnership and support of Comagine Health, Oregon State University Extension Services, Food Hero, and the Oregon Wellness Network. A little bit about these organizations. OSU Extension Service, which is the outreach arm of Oregon State University, partners with local communities to provide expertise and knowledge to help Oregonians thrive. Food Hero is part of OSU Extension Service and is your go-to site for quick, tasty, budget-friendly recipes, helpful cooking and physical activity tips, and garden resources in English and Spanish. Oregon Wellness Network, also known as OWN, delivers programs to help individuals prevent and manage chronic health conditions and foster overall well-being. The wellness programs offered by OWN are proven to improve quality of life and are available throughout Oregon. Overall, the partnership between these organizations works to serve the wellness of Oregonians through health, education, and resources. All right, before we get going, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items so you'll know how to have the best experience possible. As we go through the presentations, you can submit any questions you have through the Q&A box. To do this, click the Q&A button and a window will appear where you can submit your questions. You can submit questions anonymously or to the whole group. And if you see someone has submitted a similar question or a question that you like, vote on their question by clicking the thumbs up button so that we can focus on the most popular questions first. There are a lot of people joining us tonight and I'm sure there will be lo lots of great questions. We'll send a follow-up email with responses to any questions we're not able to cover during the time we have this evening. If you are having any technical difficulties, we do have moderators who can help you via the chat box. Tonight's event is being recorded and will be sent out along with the presentation slides in a follow-up email. All right, now that we've covered the housekeeping items, let's get on with the show. I'll be joined this evening by Allison Harris and Emily Riley from OSU Extension. Allison will be sharing about Walk With Ease and Emily will be leading our cooking demonstration later on. Allison, would you please introduce yourself and tell us more about Walk With Ease? Hi, my name is Allison Harris, and I am the Walk With Ease program coordinator through the Oregon State University Extension Service. I've been with the program for six years now, and during that time, I've had the opportunity to see firsthand the positive impact that this program can have in participants' lives. OSU Extension has been working with Walk With Ease for 14 years now and we've continued to offer this program because of its impact. The name Walk With Ease might sound like it's just a walking program, but this program is really focused on movement. It does include walking, but it also includes strengthening and stretching exercises, and everyone, regardless of fitness level and mobility, is invited to join and can benefit from the program. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to co-teach a virtual Walk With Ease class that was designed for people with disabilities. One of the participants in this class was a man that had recently been paralyzed from the neck down and was learning to operate his electric scooter with a chin controller. For him, movement looked like practicing with his scooter on the sidewalk outside of his house, which was a big step as he wasn't comfortable leaving home. By the end of our six week program, he reported that not only had his neck increased in strength and he was better able to control his scooter, but he was actually able to wiggle a couple of fingers. Although this wiggle was subtle and was a small range of motion, this increased mobility was incredibly significant to him. So why does movement matter? It changes lives and quality of life. Most of us know that physical activity has many benefits like improving heart health, lowering cholesterol, and lowering blood pressure. In addition to physical benefits, movement can help manage stress. 
What you may not know is that movement has many mental and emotional benefits, like improving mood, increasing creativity, managing pain, and supporting daily living activities and independence, even as we age. The Physical Activity Guidelines for Americans, developed by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, recommends that adults get 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity aerobic activity and do muscle strengthening activities at least two days per week. In 2020, only 24% of adults were meeting this guideline for both types of activity. The percentage of both men and women who met the guidelines for both activities decreased with age. Aerobic activity is movement that increases your breathing and your heart rate, and this can be incorporated throughout your day. It doesn't have to take place in a gym or look like formal exercise. Some examples of low to moderate aerobic activity include parking further away from the grocery store to get extra steps, taking the stairs instead of the elevator, and playing with your kids or your grandkids. So what keeps us from moving? There are a lot of things that can get in the way of being more active. For instance, you might think that you have to work out really hard or spend a long time at the gym every day for exercise to count. The truth is that any amount of physical activity, even just a couple of minutes at a time, counts and can have health benefits. Another challenge can be feeling like you don't have a plan to follow or you don't know how to get started. So how can Walk With Ease help? Walk With Ease is a simple, free physical activity program that will help you make a movement plan set goals, and get more active. Walk With Ease includes both aerobic and muscle strengthening activities. Let's start with the basics. What is Walk With Ease? Walk With Ease is an evidence-based physical activity program that was developed by the Arthritis Foundation for people with arthritis and other chronic pain conditions. Although the program was designed for people with arthritis, it's available to everyone and can be beneficial for anyone hoping to become more active. This program is evidence-based, which means that it's been tested to make sure that it delivers the results it promises. Walk With Ease has been proven to increase physical activity and walking endurance while decreasing pain. The program also helps make lifestyle changes. Best of all, this program is available free to all Oregonians. If you're joining us today and you live outside of Oregon, there is still a free option for you as well. Keep an eye out for the email following this event for more details. Walk With Ease has four key program components. Each session includes a brief lecture portion, which includes health education information on topics like avoiding injury, picking the right equipment, choosing walking shoes, and choosing the types of surfaces you walk on. The program also includes stretching and strengthening exercises, motivational strategies, and walking. The program is offered in three different formats instructor-led in-person classes, instructor-led virtual classes, and a self-directed program. I'll dive into each of these options in more detail and show you how to get connected to the format that best fits your needs. Instructor-led in-person classes are the traditional version of the program. These classes are 18 sessions held for either six or nine weeks based on leader preference. The classes are led by a trained instructor and consist of health education and group walking. As part of this program, all participants receive a free Walk With Ease guidebook. There's an upcoming class scheduled in Newport, and I'll share more about that in a minute. And you can expect to see more in-person classes in the spring as the weather improves. Next are the instructor-led virtual classes. These differ from in-person classes in that they are held online via Zoom, but they still offer an instructor-led format. The program is six weeks long with most classes meeting once per week. The live meetings include health education on symptom management, overcoming barriers and stretching and exercising safely, as well as facilitated discussion. Participants walk independently throughout the week. These classes offer accountability and social connection while still providing flexibility, and they're open to anyone in Oregon. All participants receive a Walk With Ease guidebook as part of the program. We have three instructor-led virtual classes beginning in February, and I'll share the details on those in a bit. And this is a great option for the winter months when the weather isn't as nice and it might be harder to get outside. 
The third program format is the self-directed program. This program is an online independent study format and is self-paced. Once you register online and create an account, you'll have access to our Walk With Ease portal and a Walk With Ease ebook. This program is available all um, year round and it's open and free to all Oregonians, regardless of location. You can sign up anytime. This program is ready when you are. As I just mentioned, when you sign up for the self-directed portal or program, you will create an account in our Walk With Ease portal. So I'd like to take you on a virtual tour of the portal and share some of the great tools that it includes. This portal is your one-stop shop to all things Walk With Ease and includes tools like the walking diary, weekly videos, brief audio lectures, the Walk With Ease ebook, weekly support emails, and more. Let's take a tour. So first, I'd like to show you our Walk With Ease web page. We'll share the link to this page on uh, following the event so you can access it. And on this page, you're going to see options to search for an in-person or virtual class or to register online for the self-directed program. I'm going to show you the self-directed program first, and then we're going to come back and look at in-person and virtual classes. When you click this link right here, it's going to take you directly to our Walk With Ease portal. Here, you'll fill out your contact information to create an account. Under Group, you can choose the January Movement Matters event. And once you do that, an option will come up to access the ebook. Once you complete your account, you'll immediately have access to the ebook and the portal. So, next, I will show you the weekly dashboard. So this is your weekly dashboard. This page has a variety of tools that you can use to access the course materials, set goals, and track your progress. You'll notice across the top here that there's a button for each week of the program. As you move through the weeks, you're more than welcome to revisit past weeks, and all of those links will still be available to you. You'll also have the option to start the program again, if you like, using this button here. Right above this button is a banner that says Access Walk With Ease Book. When you click here, it will take you directly to the ebook. You can see on the right hand side that there are multiple ways to engage with the material. There's tabs labeled watch, read, listen, and review. Each tab includes links to the materials. And then here on the left hand side, we have an area where you can enter your goals for the week, where you can track your weekly accomplishments and weekly minutes uh, that you move, and set goals for the following week. A favorite feature in the portal is this graph. So as you track your weekly movement, there will be uh, spots charted on the graph and you can visually see your progress. This portal is a fantastic tool to get your movement program started. The portal is also available in Spanish, uh, including the ebook using the exact same link. The portal will open in English or Spanish based on your computer language settings. So that was the self-directed program. Now let's take a look at virtual and in-person classes. We're going to go back to our main Walk With Ease page to do this. And now I'm going to click on this link here that says search for an in-person or virtual class. Once I do that, it takes me directly to uh, the Oregon Wellness Network listing of all classes in Oregon. So as I mentioned earlier, there is an upcoming class in Newport and it's listed right here. So you can see that it lists the class location, a start date, a start time. And in this column here, you can see if it's in-person or if it's live online. So I'll also mention the upcoming virtual classes are also listed on the same page, and the registration process is the same for both program formats. So if I'd like to register, I go over to this blue register button, and this will take me to the workshop registration page. You'll complete the requested information, and from there, the leader will reach out to you with any additional class details, including the Zoom link if it's a virtual class. So at this point, I'd like to share a list of upcoming in-person and virtual classes that are available beginning in February. There will be that in-person class hosted by the Newport 60 Plus Center, and that's on Tuesdays and Thursdays beginning on February 13th. We have three virtual classes beginning in February as well. So two of these classes begin on Tuesday, February 6th. One's at 10 a.m. and the other is at 5.30 p.m. 
We also have a third virtual class, which begins February 13th and will meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Choose the time that works best for you. And as always, the self-directed program is ready when you are. So we've been talking a lot about movement and I'm guessing most of us have been sitting for the past 20 or so minutes. Let's go ahead and take a moment to get the wiggles out, maybe stretch your arms and stand up. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this opportunity as well. Oh, that feels better. Okay, to keep us going, I'd like to share one of the Walk With You strengthening exercises. To do this, I'll revisit the Walk With You portal. And in this portal, I'm gonna visit reach four and go down to this watch tab. We're gonna be doing the heel and toe raises today. And I encourage you to follow along with the video. Next are heel and toe raises. Sit down with or without shoes. Lift the heels, keeping toes on the floor. Hold for a count of five and lower slowly. Lift the toes keeping heels on the floor. Hold for a count of five, lower slowly. Repeat five times to start, increasing to no more than 30 times. It is easier to do both legs at the same time. This is just a very brief example of what's available through Walk With I hope you participated and that it helped get the blood flowing. Allison, thank you so much. I don't know about the rest of you, but my shoulders sure feel a lot better and sort of my calf muscles. Um, we do have a couple of questions that have come in. The first question is, can I use the portal along with an in-person class? I'd like to access the digital resources as well. That's a great question. And yes, you're more than welcome to use the portal alongside uh, an in-person class. What we would request is that when that book option pops up, that you would just let us know that you already have access to a book through an in-person class so that we don't offer the book twice. Uh, but yes, you're more than welcome to sign up through that portal concurrently. Wonderful. And this is somewhat of a similar question, but is can we register for more than one program? Yes, that's also a great question. Uh, we have many participants that elect to take the program multiple times. And that's one of the wonderful things about this program is that it's so rooted in social connection that many times participants are making friends, they're establishing walking groups, or they find it so helpful and see so much progress that they want to take it again. So we received a testimonial just very recently that said that somebody was going through the program for the third time. And that's not uncommon. It's totally welcome and allowed. So yes, register as many times as you want. Um, go through that self-directed program as many times as you want. Just remember that in the self-directed program, you have that green button to start the program over. You don't have to register a second time. Perfect. Great. And we did have another question come up asking if tonight's session would be recorded and if we'd be sharing slides. And yes, we will definitely um, share all of the information in a follow-up email. Um, so one just last question, what does a walk with these class normally look like? Yeah, that's a great question as well. So all of our classes begin with a welcome and a brief lecture. Uh, we call this a lecturette in the Walk With Ease program. From there, we move into the group movement time. And we like to use something called the five-step walking pattern to guide our group movement. The five steps are a warm-up, a short gentle stretch, the main aerobic activity, a cool down, and a longer stretch. And the program uses walking as the primary activity, but I like to mention that this framework and the other information and tools provided can be applied to other kinds of movement as well. So we like to emphasize that to participants that the best physical activity is the one you'll actually do. And for virtual classes, I'll just say that you'll receive all the same information as the in-person classes, except that movement piece is on your own. The virtual classes typically spend a little bit more time in group discussion, 
to build that social connection piece since they aren't exercising together. That is a terrific overview. Thank you so much. And thank you for all of the information. We really appreciate it. Now, before we begin our cooking segment, I'd like to remind everyone to continue to submit questions in the Q&A. We will answer some of the most popular cooking questions after the segment. And don't forget to give thumbs up in the Q&A for the questions that you like most. All right. I know some people are concerned about being able to cook meals that are easy, nutritious, and taste delicious, or maybe that it's too hard or complicated. The good news is that it doesn't have to be. Emily Riley is here from OSU Extension and Food Hero to show us how to make refried bean soup and baked apples to get you started. She'll also take you on a tour of the Food Hero website where there are hundreds of easy and nutrition, nutritious recipes and resources. And just know, we'll share these recipes and others in the follow-up email that you receive after this event. Take it away, Emily. Thanks, Trey. Hi, I'm Emily Riley, and my pronouns are she, her. I'm the Family and Community Health and SNAP Ed Program Coordinator for Clatsop County. And I'm actually right here in Clatsop County's Regional Food Bank, to show you how to make a couple recipes. Participating in a fitness program like Walk With Ease actually increases our metabolism and makes us need to make sure that we have good food to fuel our bodies. So that's why tonight I'm going to share two recipes from our Food Hero website that are simple, nutritious, and adaptable. I also chose them because they are both really great ways to use affordable items that most of us have in our pantries. After I've picked both recipes, I will take you on a food on a tour of our Food Hero website so you can see just how easy it is to find the perfect recipe that fits your needs. The first step when cooking a recipe is washing hands. If you or your cooking helpers ever forget to wash your hands, our Food Hero recipes have that as the very first step. So you can't forget. Now that my hands are washed, I have my recipe all printed out. Oops. I have my recipes all printed out. I like to print out my recipes just because I like to take notes on them. Some people like to save them in their favorites. So I'll show you how to do that too when we're on that Food Hero website. I've got my recipe all set, and now I'm going to take all of my ingredients and I'm going to measure them out the way the recipe said. Because I read through all of my recipe, I read through all of my ingredients, and I made sure I had what I needed and that I had other things to supplement if, in case I didn't have the things that the recipe had. So you've got, I've got my refried beans, my broth, my tomatoes, my onions, and my garlic. That's it. That's pretty much all that this soup needs. With just a few ingredients, this recipe is so tasty. And the easy part of this recipe is you use the same amount of refried beans, tomatoes, and broth, so that if I want to scale up or scale down, it makes it really easy. All I need to do is use the same can for anything that I have, and it gives me the same amount of broth. Today, I'm not using very many extra spices because refried beans already have spices in them. But if you like an extra kick or an extra spice, go crazy with your spice rack. We're gonna start by turning my stove on at medium high and warming up some oil. As I let that oil warm, I'm going to get my onions and my garlic. And chop them in. I'm gonna let these heat up until they become soft and slightly translucent. As I warm up my onions and my garlic, I'm releasing a lot of really delicious smells and it's deepening the flavor of the onions and the garlic. So that's really why we often have these aromatic foods in and we put them in first. So it's a 
just going to take a little second. And I just chopped up my onions in a nice, easy size because they're going to get soft and they'll be easy to eat. If I was going to be eating them fresh, I might mince my garlic and my onions up a little bit further. Things are getting a little bit so softer. So I'm going to add some jalapeno because I like a kick. This would also be where I would put in any other dry spices. If I liked extra cumin or paprika or oregano, whatever is in my spice rack. So I add these two. And give it a little stir. This takes about five minutes. After the onions and the garlic are getting nice and soft and I can smell some of my spices, I'm gonna add my tomatoes very carefully. And today I chose chopped and diced tomatoes, but whatever kind of canned tomatoes you have on hand is really great. One of the awesome things about canned tomatoes is that they're picked and canned at their peak freshness, so you get all of the good nutrients in them, and we can eat them all year round. Now you're wondering, what kind of nutrients is she talking about? Tomatoes have vitamin C, vitamin K, vitamin A, beta carotene, and one of the ingredients, one of the antioxidants you may really be familiar with is lycopene. All of these, these, these ingredients are important for skin health, we all like nice skin, heart health, and other healthy skin and bone. So I'm bringing these tomatoes up to about a boil. Looks really pretty too. One of the big things to watch when you're choosing your canned tomatoes is how much salt is in the can of tomatoes. So a lot of us do watch our sodium intake. If you read the nutrition labels, you can often find out how much sodium is in them. And many canned goods and frozen goods in our grocery stores will have a label that says no salt, if that's what you're looking for. So read those labels, take your time and pick what you want. My tomatoes are coming to a boil. So now I'm gonna turn the stove down. Kind of a medium low. And with that stove turned down, I'm now going to add my broth and my refried beans. This broth here that I'm using tonight is just bouillon in water. But I could use a broth in a box or any other kind of soup broth, a leftover soup that I might have had uh, in my freezer or my refrigerator. And last but not least are my refried beans. These are non-fat refried beans. Here we go. And I'm going to stir these periodically as I'm talking to you to let the beans incorporate into the rest of the liquid. It's a really colorful soup. I've got the green from my jalapenos. I've got the red from my onions and the red from my tomatoes. Different reds, of course. Refried beans are also a really good heart healthy ingredient. They have fiber, iron, magnesium, and zinc. Beans of all kinds are heart healthy, not just your refried beans. And because I chose fat-free refried beans, that means that unlike traditional refried beans, they're low in fat. When we cook our beans, a lot of us add a lot of different things. So maybe I'm looking for something that is very spicy. Maybe I'm looking for something that again, has no sodium in it. I'm going to take my time, read my ingredients. And I also wanna make sure if I 
and vegetarian, that I choose the vegetarian beans. So just looking at the ingredients, reading the labels, and picking whatever is appropriate for your diners. Now that my soup is on the stove, I'm gonna make dessert. Tonight, I'm making baked apples. Apples are one of my very favorite fruits and there are so many different kinds. Apples are also really awesome because they're full of fiber and low in sugar. So they're really filling because of that fiber. And that fiber is also really good for our heart health and our gut health. Two things that we all want to stay nice and strong and healthy. This recipe is also really awesome. It can be made as a breakfast. I can use it as a snack. I can dress it up for dessert. And I can even wrap it in foil and bring it hike, hiking with me. And I've done this before. I cook the apple on the coals in my hiking camp. Here I have my apple halved and cored. And before I started, I rinsed them a little bit with apple, sorry, lemon juice uh, to make sure that they didn't turn very brown. Because a brown apple is never really pretty. You can either core the apple from the top, if you have a nice little paring knife, or you can have the apple and scoop out the core, either with a knife or a, a melon spoon. This, when the apple is in half, means that I can share it with somebody else. Now that I have my halved apple, I'm gonna take some cinnamon, sprinkle it on the cut areas of my apple, Gonna pat the core of my apple with a little cranberry. Gonna sprinkle a little bit of brown sugar on top. Kind of in the middle. And then last but not least, a tiny, this is just a half teaspoon of margarine. You can use butter or margarine, whatever you like best. I take my apple, pardon me, take my apple, I squish it in half, give it a nice squeeze. Wrap it in foil and toss it in the oven at 350 degrees. I told you that I could have made these apples in the microwave and what I would have done was just put a little piece of wax paper on top of my apple and cook it for about two and a half, three minutes, depending on the strength of your microwave. And that's it. Now we have nice soup and dessert. So while everything is getting nice and cooked, I'm going to next, take you on a tour of food here. So we're going to switch over to our tour of the Food Hero website. Once we get that up, oh, there we go. And I'll show you how I pick these recipes. Today we're using the English language version but if I wanted to see things in Spanish, I would just click the button on the top right that says Espanol. You can follow my little finger there. Before we go to the recipes, we can also use the Food Hero website to learn about lots of other things, gardening, physical activity, and just whatever you're looking for. All right, you're asking where I found these recipes. First, we're going to start on the recipe page. That has every recipe in alphabetical order. But the best part of searching the recipes on Food Hero is searching for what we want. For example, when I was looking, when I was thinking about making a recipe that was mostly from pantry staples, I decided to search by ingredient. I could either search for what it contains or make sure a recipe doesn't contain something I don't have or I'm wanting to avoid. If I type in refried beans 
and then hit search. It brings up the recipes that I'm looking for. So there are those two recipes. We click on that right, refried bean soup and we will share all the links to all these recipes as well in the email that we sent to you. So here's my refried bean soup. This soup has the whole recipe, it has prep and cook time, and then those nutrition facts. If you keep scrolling down, you'll see options to print out or add to your online favorites. And even further down, you get comments from real people who have tried out these recipes and fed them to their friends and family um, and samples. You also don't have to just search by ingredient. Maybe you're crunched for time. Maybe you have a special diet. Maybe you have a crowd to feed. Maybe you're looking for something that's kid approved. You can even search by cooking method. I could spend hours showing you awesome things on the Food Hero site. But the last thing I want to share is our Food Hero publications. Every month we publish the Food Hero Monthly that focuses on one ingredient or topic. Just look at all the different food heroes we've already had and created. All you have to do is just click on, on something you want to learn about and you get two awesome pages full of recipes, and facts. We even tell you how to best store the food that you've gotten. Now we have another publication and it's a really great cookbook. This cookbook has a lot of our fan favorites that people have told us work awesome in their kitchen and with their families. And this cookbook also has tips and tricks. One of the ones I use the most is the measuring tool guide. So there you have it. A couple great ways to expand your regular cooking with nutritious and delicious meals. And speaking of delicious, let's check out dinner. Here's my soup, all nice and set. Here's my apple, juicy and soft. And then I'm gonna sprinkle on a couple almonds, because I like crunch. Emily, that was fantastic. And it really makes me want some refried bean soup. <laughs> um, I'm uh, every time I go to Food Hero, I'm always I always learn something new. So thank you for the great tour. We did have a couple of questions come in um, during your presentation. The first question is, how long in the oven for the apples? These apples were in the oven. It was. About I set my oven at 350 and they were in there for about 30, uh, 40 minutes. Um, these are bigger apples. You can see they're about as big as my hand. Sure. Um, if you have a smaller apple, it would be less. Uh, and if I cooked them open faced, so a half and half, that would make them cook quicker. Or if I had that whole apple that was stuffed in the core, it probably would take a little bit longer. Great. Um, and how about in the microwave? In the microwave, two to three minutes, and it really does depend on how um, how strong your microwave is. So yeah, I would sure. say microwave them for two minutes, poke them with a fork, microwave them for another minute or two, poke it with a fork, see what you like. I like a little bit of crunch in my apple too, even when it's baked. So it's up to you. It's up to you and your family. I love it. Um, let's see, just want to remind everyone, we will send out the recipes and link to the recipe book that was shared. Question came in, are the recipes in the book also on the website? Yes. Great. 
And then last question, um, do you have any recommendations about other dishes that might go nicely with the soup and the apples? I do. So with this soup, I often like to make quesadillas or biscuits. Uh, we have a really great master mix biscuit recipe that goes like that. Maybe you want cornbread. The other thing I like to do with these apples, sometimes I like to stuff them with granola and then put some low fat or no fat vanilla yogurt on top of them. So I get this nice little um, creamy dessert. I love that. I think someone actually made a comment about um, Greek yogurt and granola. So you're on the same page. All right. Thank you so much for sharing all of your expertise and for the Food Hero, uh, food hero Tour. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Trey. This was really fun. All right, everyone, we're moving into the home stretch of our event, and we really hope you have enjoyed everything this far. We do have a quick poll to hear about your experience. We'll take just a couple of moments for each of you to tell us about what you think about the event and, the inf and just know that all of the information that you share is anonymous. Um, and then after the poll, we'll review some highlights of the information shared tonight and share the Walk With Ease, Walk With Ease link to register. So if we'd please go ahead and launch the poll. And again, we really do appreciate any feedback that you have. We'll give everybody just a couple of minutes. I see that's now popped up on the screen for everybody. Again, thank you for the feedback. We just want to keep getting better and better. So thanks for taking a moment to let us know what you think. We'll give it about 30 more seconds. All right, I think when we're ready, we give it another minute. All right, thanks again for sharing your thoughts with us about our event. So as a reminder, Walk With Ease is available at no charge to all Oregonians. And here is an overview of the differences between virtual and self-directed, just in case that isn't quite clear yet. And if you're joining us from another state, in the follow-up email, we will share the registration link for a free national Walk With Ease self-directed program. So we make sure and take care of everybody. All right, so as a reminder, virtual is led by an instructor. It's six weeks long, once per week. You have access to a trained instructor and that it is a structured class schedule. So it's set up at the same time every week. Self-directed is independent study. It's at your own pace. You have access to the Walk With Ease portal and you can sign up and start anytime. So keep in mind that for either program, you are welcome to invite a friend or family member to register with you. It's always nice to have a buddy along for the ride. The link to register is walk.oregonstate.edu, and it can either be accessed through the QR code on the screen or the link posted in chat. We will also share this information with you in the follow-up email. We hope you have enjoyed our event this evening. OSU Extension and the Oregon Wellness Network are committed to the wellness of all of our communities, and we appreciate you taking the time to be here. The recording, presentation slides, and the links referenced will be sent out in a follow-up email. Thank you all again for being with us this evening.